Norman, I happen to know that you spent the night in a house in Toronto the other night, a house that's supposed to be haunted. Right. Uh, you know, Ken, most of your haunted house stories have humorous connotations. This one really doesn't, although it does have all the characteristics of a classic ghost yarn. Right down to the nearby graveyard, the crowds who think the whole thing is screamingly funny every day and every night since the story broke. But inside, it's a story of a family terrified by night and harassed all the time. The Hawkins family and their two children. Well, on the Monday night, that's when the, uh, it first started, with these loud screams in the attic. And uh, I got up out of bed, and as soon as I got up, they stopped. And I went down the hall to put the light on to check on the children to see if they were uh, sleeping in bed, and they were all fine. And I went downstairs to check on the cat, because the cat was out that night. And I thought maybe it was a couple of cats in an alley fight, like, you know? Well, you mean you, you were lying, you were asleep at the time, weren't you? That's right, and it woke me. And you just heard a scream? No, uh, screams and moans at the same time. Could you describe it to me? It went, oh, hee 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 We laid there for about 20 minutes uh, listening to the screaming. Uh, I was too scared to move, to be honest with you. I finally got up enough nerve and uh, I turned on the light here. And as soon as I stepped out of bed, it stopped. What did you do after you got out of bed? Well, we went to the phone here in the hall, and I phoned my mother downstairs while Roy got dressed. And Mom and Dad came running up, and my husband and my father went up in the attic and checked the attic for anything that was up there. And there wasn't a thing up there. When you got up there, did you hear any sounds? No. Did you see anything unusual? No. Did you have a sense of anything odd being in the attic? Well, at that time, uh, I think we were uh, really scared. Uh, I don't think we would have felt anything anyway. <laughs> then on the Tuesday morning, my husband got up and went to work, and I was the only one in the house with the two children. I laid here in bed, and I sort of dozing off to sleep. And as I was dozing, I had to wake because something just was looking over me. You know, I couldn't explain it, but something just woke me up. And then I dozed back off to sleep again, and it just felt like, as I was laying there, something walked right through my body, and I went completely cold. Was there a change in the temperature in the room? No, I didn't notice a change in the temperature of the room. I noticed that I was cold, and I had to get covered up because I was just freezing. Any screams at that time? No, no screams whatsoever. This was in the daytime, this broad was daylight. In the, this was about 7 o'clock in the morning. You told me, Mrs. Hawkins, that, that you felt suddenly cold the morning you were lying here in the bed. That's there was right. A, as if something had walked through your body. Those were your words. That's right. Was there ever again a dramatic change in temperature in this house? Yes, off and on. There has been ever since this has started. You'll, you'll be standing there, and there'll be a cold breeze come and brush right by you. Did either of you ever see anything unusual? Yes, we did. Uh, the one night I was making a phone call, by the phone there in the hall, and my husband was in sitting watching Tarzan. And I called him to the hall, I said, I see a light come down out of the attic and come under the attic door and float in by our beds here. And he said I was overtired and to come on and sit down and watch Tarzan. Finally, he looked into the bedroom and here was this light floating around here by the bed. What did you see, Mr. Hawkins? Well, I saw uh, uh, this light it's more more or less uh, glare uh, that's how i class it anyway how big uh about the size of a 50 cent piece and was it just sort of reflected on the wall or did it no, seem to be, floating, it it right? seemed to be uh, floating right here by the bed and then all of a sudden it faded out and disappeared do you believe that your house is haunted mrs hawkins well i wouldn't actually say it was haunted but uh, if somebody can come up with an explanation for it well that's fine these are the Reverends Tom and Pat Bartlett of the Star of Progress Spiritual Church in West Toronto. Can you explain it, Mrs. Bartlett? Because of the law of spirit return, it could be a spirit who has lived here at some time and returned for some reason. Uh, this person could be uh, already out of their body or as people would say, they have died. Or it could be the spirit return of a person who is still living upon this earth, and this would be called astral projection. 
This is the stairway leading to the attic of the Hawkins home, from whence came the strange sounds, the screams, and the footsteps. The Reverend Bartlett came to the top of these stairs in the attic here, where I'm standing now. It was pitch dark at the time. They closed the trap door here, so there was no light at all in the room. And then what happened, Mr. Richard Bartlett? And over here, I saw what looked to be like a large egg, approximately four feet high and about two feet wide. And I asked my wife, could she see this thing also? And she said, no, I couldn't see it. And uh, when he said it was beginning to move, I suddenly saw a bar about 12 inches long, like a ruler floating flat side facing me through the air. And it moved correspondingly to this Where oval object. Over to approximately like this here. Come straight across here. And and stop approximately here. Now, Mrs. Bartlett, did you find that uh, the object you were seeing stopped exactly the same place? Yes. It seemed to stop just where this ladder is. And then, Mr. Bartlett, what happened <laughs> to the figure you, you saw? The, the figures I saw it just stopped immediately here, and it just went, stood here and waited. The, and then, after watching it for a while, we decided we'd, we'd call up the other people. And then, immediately, they, before they came up, they threw, somebody threw a switch on and flooded this place with light, and then we discovered <coughs> this ladder here. Mm -hmm. And it appeared to me as though this person, or whatever it was, was desirous of climbing up this ladder. Did you hear anything? No, I heard no sound whatsoever. So it was just a strange... Strange apparition. Oval-shaped oval figure. Shape. Mrs. Bartlett saw a bar moving across the attic, attic space. space. Correct. One week after seeing the apparition in the attic, the Reverend Bartlett returned to the Hawkins home. He came into the room at the top of the stairs. In that room at the time, there was no furniture. As soon as I came into the room and shut the door, I waited a moment, and all of a sudden, in front of me, appeared a bed. And in this bed were two figures laying there as though they were asleep. Reverend Bartlett, what do you think it all means? Well, I've come to the conclusion that this uh, interference in this home has been some inspiration from some individual either living or since passed from this expression of life to induce these people to leave this place, to force them to leave this place before something drastic happens to them. 